For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put that work in Hamashiach give us that order Prepare slaughter For all his sons and his daughters Won't fill the cities with faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put this work in Hamashiach give us that order or constitution, an order, or government. That doesn't mean the whole entire world, unfortunately, to you. That's not what that means. So, um, I'm gonna correct you and say that word world does not mean everybody. Let's get Isaiah 45 and 17. Hold on, before you get, before you get that, before you get that. How you feel about the definition? Is it, does, does the Greek mean, any, mean anything to you guys? Does it, do you consider it when you're understanding uh, the text? Is that supposed to be Calvinism? No. No. Going into the Greek is not limited to Calvinism. So, when we bring... Say it again? Say... No, no, no. I'm not asking you, are you an expert? I'm saying, do you take the Greek into consideration when you're understanding the text? Exactly. So that's all we're trying to show you here, is that when we, when we go into the Greek word, for the word world, the Greek word cosmos or cosmos, it doesn't, it's not defined as everybody on the planet. So now, and, and if there is anywhere in the Greek definition of cosmos that it says that, then we would have to then weigh the matter, right? Because it's not limited to one thing, seeing that we say it's an act or a harmonious arrangement, government, so on and so forth, right? We know that there's not one government that rules the entire planet Earth. So when we read that, for God so loved the world, or for God so loved the cosmos, if, the, if within the definition, it's not defined as the entire planet, how do we now reconcile what, what the Greek is saying with your interpretation that it's the entire planet Earth? I think this is a myth, but that's okay. It's a what? It's a bit of a myth, don't you think? You said it's a bit of a myth? No. Hold on, hold on. Um, what's your what's your what's your understanding of semantics? Because I want to make sure that, that that what you're saying is is accurate to what you're uh, claiming we're doing. Okay. I, I think that's a good question, right? No, no. Remember, remember, we deal within the simplicity of Christ, right? Absolutely. Now, now, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing, though. Where we feel like it's super duper duper simple, but hold on. But where people um, convolute, right, to make things more complex than it has to be, hold on, is where people try to look at an ancient text through a modern lens. You see what I'm saying? Instead of looking at the modern world through an ancient lens. See what I'm saying? So a lot of times. E Calvinists, what a Calvinist will do is they'll say, see, listen, we have to look at the Old Testament through a New Testament lens, meaning the New Testament is supposed to interpret the Old. We don't believe that. We feel and we take the stance that the Old Testament is what sets the standard and interprets the New Testament. It does, like you said, it's so simple. Why would God work backwards? Why would God give so much revelation to people for thousands of years and they never understood anything until Jesus came but we can see when Jesus came he says I only come to affirm what was written of old not to interpret or to correct but to affirm it beautiful beautiful so so now that we're on the same For, for the most part, I think we are, especially on a, on a foundational level, because we're both building on the Bible, right? But we do veer off and start to separate from one another when we take the position, or excuse me, when you take the position, rather, that John 3.16, John 3.16 is talking about any the, uh, salvation being open for anybody on the planet Earth, which, guess what? The Old Testament never foretold of that. So if we're going to take the understanding that we're going to build off of what was, and already already established to then for it to make sense when the time of Christ came and then when Christ leaves and leaves the, the mission to the apostles, right? 
we have to continuously and harmoniously build on what already was, what is now being written, and then how it's going to proceed in the future. This is why I made sure to stop him before he went to Isaiah to set the foundation of what John 3.16 is talking about. So now we're going to bring it out so we have an understanding. Bring it out. Look at Hebrews chapter 1 and verse... No, 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 no. Uh, Isaiah 45 and 17. Okay, right. Go ahead. Look at Isaiah chapter 45 verse 17. Bring it out! They... But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Again, we're just building a principle first. And then when we get to John 3, 16, then we'll see if we can reconcile the entire text and not just one portion of it, right? So Isaiah 45 and 17, Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation, right? The same way Christ in John, or in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So we see that everlasting salvation, everlasting life is literally dealing with Israel. Read it again from the top. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Go ahead. Ye shall not be ashamed Go ahead. nor confounded. Israel is not going to be ashamed, nor are they going to be confounded in the salvation that God is going to give them. And what are they? Go ahead. World without end. Read it again. World without end. It's literally telling us long before Jesus ever walked the earth in his physical incarnation that Israel is the world that will be saved unto everlasting. So hold on, real quick, last, last thing, and I'm turning it over to you. Jesus said name was Paul, right? So are you saying that hold on, hold, I just said two seconds, hold on. I'm, make my last time, and then your name is Paul, correct? Or I'm Taz, just so we, you know, we understand each other. So, if Israel is going to be saved, and that has already been established long before Christ hit the scene, why is it that by the time we get to the Gospel of John, that it now, the world means something different? Go ahead. I am affirming that the invitation of, of the salvation of Jesus Christ is only to the children of Israel as the words of Christ tells us. Can I show you the words of Christ? Do you mind? Hold on. I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you. Hold on. Wait. Let, let's, let's look at the words of Christ. I, don't, I hear what you're saying, and I know you hear what I'm saying. You do? So you should know this verse too. You got it? Matthew 15? Bring it out. In the book of Matthew, chapter 15, 21. and verse 21. Uh -huh. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Uh -huh. And behold, a woman out of Canaan came out of the same coast. And Are you familiar with this passage? The Canaanite woman that approached Christ? Okay, so you're going to be familiar with what happened and what Christ told her. Read. And cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. Go ahead. But he answered her not a word. The woman approaches Christ. She's from Canaan. My daughter is vexed with a devil. Please help. He, he, he ignores her. There was a reason why he ignored her. He's going to tell her why he ignored her. Go ahead. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she crieth after us. So after she approaches Christ and he ignores her, she then goes and approaches the disciples. And the disciples didn't know what to do, so they came to Christ and say, Christ, can you, Lord, can you tell her to leave? Because now she's crying after us. Read. Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sick, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He literally just explained why he ignored this woman of Canaan. He says, I can't, I, what am I going to do with this woman of Canaan? I am not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Right. Hold on, hold on. Now, now here's the thing. Let's, 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 let's bring everything to the table that we've already established. We can go back to the prophet and many of other prophets. Israel is the world that shall be saved uh, to everlasting. Christ himself says, well, I am only sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and we know we don't get salvation without who the world calls Christ. So when you ask me a question and say, so are you saying that salvation is only for Israel? I am only saying what Jesus is saying. That's right. Give me Matthew 10. So that means that, that means that people that are, are now, now, I'm going to show you something, right? Because we got to get into the gospel. 
I believe I, I belong to the Church of Jesus Christ. The Church of Jesus Christ. No, Jesus never gave us a denomination. Yeah, yeah. So, so that, so just to understand. I mean, okay, okay. I'm gonna stop being difficult. We are non-denominational. Okay, we just simply are sola scriptura. We believe in the Bible from the rooter to the tutor. It's just you know we we don't we don't follow any specific organized religious doctrine other than the doctrine that we have in the Bible because because upon investigation we're we're seeing the these denominations are ignoring things that are in the Bible in order for their denomination to stick. So I, we just don't want to be, we just don't really want to be under something like that. Last thing, I'm going to show you guys the gospel real quick. Uh, we got Matthew 10. Hold that. You got Luke 4? Give me Luke 4. And you give me Isaiah 61. Y'all got like some tape or something to hold this down? Bring it up. Fine. This is the book of Luke, chapter 4, and verse 17. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. So now we're going, Christ is quoting, going back to Isaiah, right? This is in Luke, the fourth chapter. This is in the gospel. Read. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me uh -huh. because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Don't worry about it, bro. Don't worry about it. I'll hold it. It says, Christ opened the book of Isaiah and he found the place where it says he was, a, that the spirit was upon him and he was anointed to preach the gospel, which is the good news, right? To the poor. I said, that's what Jesus said. I showed you where he said it out of his own mouth. When I read it to you, you said, ah, yeah, he did say that. I do remember. You got to beware. I do not know what a Berean is. What's a Berean? Right, 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 right. Okay, okay. I understand what you're saying now. I, when you said Berean, I don't know why I thought of a barista. Okay. So, so do you know what you're going to go check out now? You, you're going to go check out what? Whether or not salvation is really for Israel? What did you? What do you feel like you heard from us? A brief synopsis of what you heard from us today. Right. But 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 hold on. Now, are you going to go check the verses that we brought out to you? No, I'm saying, I understand just the subject matter. I'm saying, but we did give you verses. Matthew 15, Isaiah 45, 17. I believe that. Yeah, you don't have it right here in front of you. Yeah, no, no, listen, no, no problem, Paul. The thing is, is that I believe that you have verses that, that support and make you comfortable with what you believe in, yeah? My position, I, I'm, last thing, I'm going to let you go. I'm not trying to hold you up. I just want you to understand. I believe that you have verses to support how you feel. What I also believe is that you've never had verses that show you how there is a conflict with what you believe and what the actual Bible says. That's why, that's the only reason why we went to Isaiah 45 to 17 to say, if the Bible has already told us that the world is Israel, why? And this is a question that you ask when you go in your Berean uh, studies and verification. Why is the world of John now different than what the world of Isaiah? Because remember, Christ came and says, I come not to destroy or to abolish, but to only fulfill what the prophets of old have said. Which, which means that's our foundation. We got to use what the prophet said to understand what Christ came to do. All praise to the most God. We appreciate you, uh, uh, Paul. You, you and your wife go out here and, and you stay warm. All right? Most definitely. For all his sons and his daughters Won't feel the sins with the faces Iniquities of they father Bloodthirsty is of our nation Not for living water Waiting to put that work in Hamashiach gives that order Prepare slaughter for all his sons and his daughters, won't feel the sins with his faces. Iniquities of they fall. Bloodthirsty is the fall nation. Not for living, born. Wait to put this work in. How much y'all give us that order?